Hello, this is Ian with White Horse RV. We'll be video demoing this 2017 Winnebago Mini Winnie 25B. It's a C-Class motorhome. Now coming around in your first compartment here is your generator. So if we open this guy up, there's a little clip here to hold the door open. Pop this cover off. You will see right there is your dipstick for checking your oil. Down in here there is a breaker which is controls the 110 coming out of the generator. Those rarely trip. The only time I've ever had them trip is on an extremely hot day and it's been running all day long. You want to check your oil every time you use before and after you use your generator for any long period of time during when it's heat out if it's cold out you can check it probably every four or fifth uses coming to this compartment in here is your propane tank you have your fill here any place that fills propane can fill that and this here is the valve for turning your propane on and off now coming to this compartment your power cord gets wound up in this compartment uh, it's a 30 amp 110 power cord you can plug it in to supply power or if you have your generator running you plug your plug into that outlet that outlet is powered by the generator so if your gen is running you plug in now you have power just like you're plugged in the shore power now you have your water heater right here this water heater has a steel tank so it has an anode rod the anode rod there is also your drain plug you back that out if you back that out there it'll drain the water heater the anode rod is a consumable material it basically grabs any minerals or debris drop into the bottom of the tank that does eventually wear down to a thin rod you need to replace it also when you drain it if there's any debris or slush it's just that doing its job so don't be alarmed you have two resets right here if you can't feel anything they're good if you can push it in here click they had popped so if you have any issues with the water heater not functioning i would check them coming around here you have your city water input uh that there is where you hook your your pressurized garden hose from your house when you're at the campground with that it's supplying water to the whole plumbing system you don't need your pump you just need to hook the hose to that and you'll have water everywhere that's your cable in for your campground cable. Now, coming underneath here, you have your sewer output here. You have your black valve for your toilet, your gray valve for your showers and sinks. When you're hooked up to the sewer at the campground, you can leave the gray open. As for the black, you need to leave it shut. A couple of reasons are if it's, when you drop the chemical down it, it breaks down material helps with odor and helps keeps the sensors clean so if that was open it would just run out the other reason is you'd end up with solid staying liquid going in a big old mess so every time you use the toilet you're going to check your monitor panel when you hit two-thirds you're going to dump it now when you're done camping for the week you have a sandy flush so you open your gray you open your black you dump everything out hook it shut your gray leave your black open unhook the hose from the city water connect it to here That'll run the little sprinkler and the black tank. It'll clean out the tank, but it'll also clean out your sewer line. Uh, after it's been cleaned, you can turn this hose off, shut that valve. Never have water going in with the valve shut when you're using the sandy flush. Always have the black valve open if you're using that. In the bumper here, you have your sewer hoses slid inside there. Your ladder here so you can access your roof. Uh, we have just checked the roof during the uh, prep but you're going to want to check at beginning and end of season if there's any issues any bubbles any marks you're going to just want to wipe them with alcohol and then just go over them with the self-leveling lap sealant that there is just a storage compartment over here you have your freshwater tank fill you hook a garden hose there and it will fill your fresh water tank the fresh water tanks for if you're dry camping or if you're traveling and you want to bring your own water so if you need to stop to use the bathroom you can use your own bathroom that's the only time you need your water pump is when you're using that fresh tank underneath the steps here 
Let me open that latch, open this. You have your batteries for the house. The battery under the hood is for just the engine. The house batteries are charged when you're plugged in, generator's running, or if the engine's running for longer than five minutes. Now, your engine battery is only being charged when your engine's running. Now over here you have the switches. This is your disconnect. You hit that off, it disconnects these house batteries from everything. So even if you're plugged in, they will not charge because they're disconnected. Now, if you're gonna store it, you're not using it for a period of time, that's when you disconnect them. Other than that, always have it on. This here's your awning out switch, your awning light switch. When you run your awning out, just keep holding the button. So it looks like that. Now over here, these knobs on each side are so you can slide your awning arm in and tighten that to put a tilt, to tilt the whole thing down or tilt one side. Uh, you wanna tilt one side to let water run off because when it rains, it's gonna belly a little if it's level and these gas struts that push it out will go in and it will dump water down. So if you have it leaning to one side, you know which side the water is going to run down or dump on. If it's really windy or like a torrential downpour, you want to bring the awning in because like I said, with those gas struts, it will allow it to move a lot and it can break. Now coming in here is the back of your water heater. Which you have a valve here. Okay, this water heater has a one-way valve. So therefore, um, hold on, let me just uh, get some light on the situation here. There's the other valve I was looking for. It's in here a little deeper. Oh, should we, there you go. That one there's the bypass. You have one that shuts off that valve there if you flip that. It will stop water from flowing into the water heater. It will let it loop past the water heater, which will allow you to winterize this unit without filling the water heater up with antifreeze because there's no need to. And the back of your water heater is underneath your stove and it's going to be behind that cover, which is held on by two screws. Now, for the rest of your water system, you come over to the bedroom area. And we look down in here. Let me just get my light steady. Down in here, in this back part, you'll see a silver valve. That is to empty your fresh water tank. And directly here is located your water pump. This does not have a winterizing kit that I see. So therefore, if you want to winterize this unit, you have to disconnect the water line going to that side of the water pump, the side with the strainer on it, and connect in your, another line Run that line into a gallon of antifreeze, turn the pump on, and let it pump everywhere. Now also in the bedroom, you have a connection for a second television. Right there. Now as for your living room television. Now behind your television here is this little plate. With this little button. When that little button's in, like that, that means it is powering the booster. The antenna will work, but the cable will not. So if the switch is out, that means that the antenna is off and the cable line in is on. It is a switch, so you either have to have it in one position or the other for the TVs to work either on antenna or cable. You also have a DVD player located right there underneath the cabinet. This is your antenna. By twisting this, it spins your antenna around the roof, which helps you tune in your radio. I mean, your TV, I'm sorry. 
Now up here at the dash, you have a switch right here. That switch says battery boost. When you hold that in, it connects the engine and house battery. If one of the batteries are dead and the other isn't, you can use that to jump start or to power something. Start your engine, start your generator. Other than that, all the controls up here are pretty standard to any automobile. Now, coming to your stove. This is like a grill. You turn your knob to the light. You spin the sparker and your burner lights. You have to have your propane on, obviously. Your refrigerator here, if you put it to auto, it's gonna use 110 if there is 110. If there is not 110, it's gonna automatically switch to propane. Now, if it's been sitting for a while, before you leave for your trip, I would turn this on the day before. I would also put it on gas, wait 20 minutes and come back and check. It takes 20 minutes for it to go through its three cycles of trying to light. In those three cycles, if it does not light, it goes to a safe mode. That will flash, means you turn her off, turn it back on, and let it try again until it lights. And then when you know it's lit, you can leave it to auto. So now you're confident that when you unplug and go to pull away, your uh, fridge will stay on. You have your 110 and 12 volt fuse panel here, which are all labeled what they are. You have your LP detector down there, which is hardwired to the battery. Over here, you have your thermostat. Heat is propane. Cool is your AC. You just put it to whatever temp you want. Uh, the air conditioner is powered off 110, so you need to be plugged in or you need your generator running. Uh, on a really hot summer day, while you're driving, the dash AC is not going to cool this thing down. You need to start your generator and turn on your roof AC. Every appliance in this can be used while driving down the road. Coming to our control panel here. Your first thing you'll notice is for your generator. Now, if you hold the stop, once that screen lights up with numbers, it is now powering your fuel pump. It's priming the fuel system. Now, after you prime your fuel system, hold start. Generator's running. When you're done, hit stop and shut her down. Right here is for your water heater. If that red light says pilot out, if that stays on for more than a couple minutes, it means it did not light. It's like your fridge, it only tries three times the light before it stops. Now, you just need to turn it off, turn it on again. Or if that light comes on after you've been using it for a while, check the resets or check to make sure you have propane. The next is your level test. You hit that, it lights it up, it lets you know what you got. Like I said, the black water, you don't, when that hits two thirds, pull that black handle. The gray water, if you're at the sept if you're at the campground, it's gonna be running out. If you're dry camping and traveling, it will go up. Both the black and gray do not have an overflow. If you go past full, it's coming back in the coach. Your fresh water tank does have an overflow. You have LP gas and battery charge. Now the water pump is an on-demand style water pump, meaning if there's pressure, it shuts itself off. When you open that up, it turns itself on. You have your water supply. You shut it off, pump goes off. And again, you only need the pump if you do not have the city water connected and you have water in the fresh tank and you're using it that way. Now you come in your bathroom here and this one GFI outlet controls every 110 outlet in the coach. If you don't have 110, I would check that guy first. Over here on your shower is this catch. You definitely want that latched if you're driving so this door doesn't fly open. You have your light switch on the wall here. Up here is your fan. You have the button to turn your fan on. And you have a handle there. Sorry about the noise, my knuckle was hitting the screen, which kind of pushed it into the fan. Now on this unit, I do believe we have covered everything. If you have any questions at all, just feel free to call here at Whitehorse RV and ask for me, Ian, or any of our technicians in the prep department. Thank you and have a nice day.